Bob's Burgers is a series I hold in high regard when it comes to adult animated family sitcoms because the Belchers are a chaotic, lovable, relatable family with everyday struggles and a strong familial bond that cannot be diminished. That's the series' strongest trait, the relationship between the Belchers. So when I learned that there was a movie, I watched through the entire series for completionist's sake, and when I finally got to the film, I was kind of disappointed that I had spent weeks watching wonderfully charming episodes just to watch a longer, wonderfully charming episode that felt like it was lacking in substance. Now, visually, this film looks great and has moments of more fluid animation when needed. The added shadows and variety of camera angles and shots do make the movie feel more cinematic, but the writing was where it was lacking, at least for me. It's the start of summer, the kids are looking forward to having new adventures with the changing of the season, while their parents try to get an extension on their loan in order to keep their business afloat. This, however, ultimately fails and things just go from bad to worse when a massive sinkhole opens up right in front of their restaurant and halts their business when they need it most to not only pay off the bank, but their rent. Bob is a complete ball of stress and self-loathing that Linda tries her best to soothe. Meanwhile, Louise is called a baby for always wearing her rabbit ears and sets out on a quest to prove otherwise by climbing into said sinkhole to prove that she is brave, but ends up finding a skeleton down there. So now there's a murder mystery that the kids ditch school to solve in order to prove Mr. Fish Odor is innocent and save their home, which kind of doesn't make much sense because by the way, if y'all didn't know, if your landlords are arrested and go to jail, uh, nothing really happens to like your apartment or homes. Landlord there or not, you still gotta pay. It's not like they're gonna repo your house or whatever, as far as I know. But that's besides the point. As the kids search for clues and their parents still trying to sell burgers on the wharf, everyone ends up in this secret bunker held captive by the real killer, Mr. Fish Odor's lawyer cousin, Grover, who showed up a total of two times in much later seasons of the series because lord knows we can't damage the precious status quo by having one of the more important fish orders be sentenced to prison so the movie having a murder mystery plot makes who isn't the killer more obvious than who the killer actually is. So by process of elimination, an audience member who's familiar with the show could easily pick out who the suspect can be or would be before the big reveal. In hindsight, it just seems more convoluted than it had to be. After sending his cousins to suffocate underwater in a craft submarine, Grover buries the Belchers alive in the sinkhole, and in their fleeting moments, Bob quickly reconciles with Linda and how her always being the optimist to his realist mustn't be the best for their relationship. The parents also clarify to Louise the true origins of her ears that they were based on Bob's mother's pink hat she used to wear. Linda decided to sew on rabbit ears on top of them and gave it to her as a gift after her first day of preschool for being so brave. Cutting to the chase here, the family saved themselves, they saved the wharf, Grover is sent to prison, and the fish owners are proven innocent. Luis's self-confidence is restored, Gene gets to perform with his van at the wharf, Tina makes... No progress with Jimmy Jr. And Bob and Linda get help from the fish owners to settle their loan with the bank. Everyone is safe and sound. Status quo preserved. All happy endings around. Overall, solid movie, but felt underwhelming to me because it does feel like a longer episode of the show. I don't know what grass y'all been feeding your cows, but the stakes aren't that high. To me, the plot of this movie could have been done either in a singular episode or an hour special. Admittedly, there are people like me that feel like this is just a longer episode because that's just what it feels like. Specifically, this is a Louise-centered episode. I'm just conflicted in thinking, what was the point of making a movie from a TV show if it's not gonna do something new or something less limited from their usual half an hour time slot? I'd argue that there's far more emotionally driven episodes that succeeded where this film fell flat for me. Even as far as a musical, this had some of the weaker songs from the series. And the only memorable song that I can say after the top of my head was Lucky Ducks, because it was such an absolute banger of an earworm. Sunny Side of Summer, it's okay. It functions best as the opening intro to the movie, but you're not gonna catch me listening to this separately from the movie. Not That Evil was saying so damn high that I could barely understand what Grover was even saying when explaining his master plan. Hands down, one of the worst villain songs I've ever heard, performance-wise anyway. And the final song was okay, I guess. 
I mean, it's a good ending song kind of song to this type of movie, but it's like, it was I. But as far as musical inspired episodes go, War of Horse, Nice Capades, Glued, Where's My Bob, and especially Fluise had far more memorable songs, enticing emotional stakes, and sense of urgency than what I got from a movie where they're trying to solve a murder mystery and being on the verge of losing their family business. Like on paper, the movie would have more stakes, but I, I don't know, I was just not as invested. The execution was just not it for me. Now, if you love Bob's Burgers for what it is, then you'll definitely enjoy this movie, which is just a higher budget, longer episode of the show. An opinion that doesn't discredit nor means to insult the film or the people that poured their hearts and soul into it is just the best way to describe it just based on observation alone. But if you are like me and expecting a bit more from this film, you'll probably be underwhelmed. I was actually hoping that the movie would have the family go out of town. A cheap family vacation gone wrong, perhaps, or even them running a shady errand for Mr. Fish Order in exchange for a few months pass on rent. Like for over 10 seasons, we've been confided in their little town and amusement park. So pardon my lack of enthusiasm and apathy when I hear that the movie takes place in the same old setting instead of going someplace new and challenging the family and their bond outside of financial distress or school shenanigans. Like if the Simpsons can go outside of their comfort zone of Springfield and face more difficult challenges than they've ever had before, then why not translate those higher stakes to the Belcher family? It can still be in the realm of grounded reality that the show is known for. I'm not expecting Bob and Linda to go on the lamb. Just simply get out of the freaking town. It's not a bad option to start with the movie, but after watching seasons after seasons of the show and then watching the movie, I am just very much underwhelmed from it. But I'll tell you now, if I wanted to watch Tina fail yet again with her romantic attempts with Jimmy Jr., Gene worrying about his unique musical outlet, Louise proving that she's not a child, and Bob and Linda worrying and supporting each other in a desperate time of financial crisis, then I could just literally watch any other episode of the damn show. The movie does not do anything too differently than what the show can already do, plus more somehow. It was just playing it very safe. The Bob's Burgers movie, in my opinion, is just a longer episode of the show and wasted potential. And you know what? That's okay because there isn't anything deeper than that or to be misunderstood, especially when it comes to this show, you take Bob's Burgers at face value. It literally is not that deep.